Yep, there we go. Okay. Using your ruler and your paper should be horizontal at your desk. I want you to draw a horizon line, please. I want it to be about in the middle of your paper, but I also want you to realize that a horizon line can be anywhere on your paper as long as it's going all the way across. That's going to be important when we get to three-point perspective. <clears throat> Put your vanishing point in the middle. I want you to know that your vanishing point really could be anywhere on the line. It doesn't always have to be in the middle. But when I'm teaching you, it helps me because you can see how things work all the way around the point. But once you get really good at it, you can put it wherever you want. Okay, your horizon line divides the sky from the land. So from here up is sky, from here down is land. That's going to be very important in three-point perspective, where your horizon line is. Okay, but we're reviewing one-point perspective. Today, every line you draw has to either be vertical or horizontal or exactly to the vanishing point. Those are your only three choices. I want you to put a box that's resting right on the horizon line and make it big, don't make it small. Make it about the same as mine. You can't see mine. One that crosses over the horizon line. And you'll have to erase the horizon line that's inside of this one because you wouldn't see it. one below the horizon line, preferably not directly under the vanishing point right now. And if I'm doing something here and you can't see it on the screen, please let me know. So you should have three boxes that are in about those places. <clears throat> Why didn't I put any boxes up here? Franny? Okay, it's not in the land area, it's in the sky area, which means they would be floating. And buildings don't usually float. <clears throat> now I have a question. When you look at this box, <clears throat> before we even, <clears throat> excuse me, before we even make it into a 3D box, what, you, what can you predict, what can you tell me about this, what's going to happen when I do this box? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm only going to be able to see the front and the side. Do you know why? It's right on the horizon line, so it's eye level. I won't see the top and I won't see the bottom. Just like when we hold our rulers up like that and you can't see the top or bottom because it's at eye level, this building is at eye level. What about this building? It's crossing over the horizon line. Am I going to see the top or bottom of it? No. No. 
any building that touches or comes across the horizon line, I'm not going to see the top or the bottom of. What about this one? I'll see the top and probably the side, right? Because it's below the horizon line. Just like if you held your ruler below your eye level, you'd be looking down at the top of it. Okay, we're going to do what we did yesterday. Every corner that can goes to the vanishing point, and I'm only going to go about halfway so I don't have to erase my guidelines. These two corners are already attached to the vanishing point. This corner would draw through the shape, which means it's invisible. There's only one corner that goes. On this one, these two corners would be invisible corners because they would draw through the shape. But this corner and this corner works. And I need to keep my ruler vertical. If your building looks like it's falling in, it's because your verticals aren't straight. And I need to erase the horizon line inside because I would not be able to see it. Am I going too fast? Okay. For this box, there are three corners that go. This one, this one, and this one. And each one has to line up to the vanishing point. One, two, three. This one would be an invisible corner. I need a parallel to this corner. It's horizontal. It's drawn between the top distance line and the middle distance line. So I'm going to keep it horizontal and connect the top distance line to the middle distance line. And I'm going to erase my guidelines that stick out. I need a parallel to this corner. This is vertical, drawn between the middle distance line and the bottom distance line. So instead of boxes now, I'm going to call them buildings, okay? And if you can't see it yet, you'll see it in just a minute. They're very long buildings. Okay, now, windows and doors. If you remember, the flat shapes that we started with, you can put windows and doors on those and not use the vanishing point. So just pick one and put windows or doors on it so you have a reference point when you need to use these for your notes. If it's on the side, if there's a window or door on the side and the top and bottom of the side go to the vanishing point, then the top and bottom of your window also has to go to the vanishing point. You start with a vertical line, how tall you want your window. Remember, vertical lines show height. Then you're going to take the top and bottom of each one of those lines toward the vanishing point but stop before you go off the building. And then you'll need vertical lines to finish the ends of the windows. So any window or any door that's on the side of the building that's going back into space 
You have to use the top and bottom for the vanishing point. Does anybody not understand what I mean? And if you remember, we actually put ledges on the tops of the buildings that we could see. And the way to do that is to find the back corner and draw a tiny little vertical line as deep as you want your ledge to be. Find the back corner. I can't do it on these because I can't see the tops. The back corner has a vertical line and then it comes over as a horizontal until it hits the side and stops. And at that intersection, lines up with the vanishing point and comes down until it hits the building and stops. And it makes a little ledge on top. Vertical, horizontal, distance. I'll wait a minute so you can catch up. Everybody sort of caught up. You can have more than one vanishing point. That's what we're going to learn. But for this one, just one. Okay, sidewalks. What can you tell me about sidewalks for this building? There isn't any. Do you know why? Because it's at eye level. And you don't see the tops of things when they're at eye level. But this building and this building would have a sidewalk. And the way to do that is to decide how wide you want your sidewalk and draw a horizontal line that goes past the corners of the building. And I'm also going to do it on this one. Now on this building, when you do your horizontal line, it needs to go way over to the right. And I'll explain why in just a minute. Or maybe I'll have you explain why. This is horizontal. Would there ever be vertical lines when you're doing sidewalks? What, do ver what kind of information do vertical lines give? Height. Height. Do the sidewalks we're drawing have height? No. No. Could, like you could if you, yeah, we'll do that in a minute. But for the most part, no. So I'm going to line the end of the sidewalk up with my vanishing point, and I'm going to stop when I hit the building so it looks like it wraps around. Then I'm going to line the other end up and go to the vanishing point just past the back corner of the building. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Vanishing point just past the corner of the building. This one has to be long enough so that when you line it up to the vanishing point, it goes behind the building. You might even have to go off the page. It needs to be a distance line. This is a vanishing point line. This is a horizontal. It needs to look like it goes behind the building. If it's too short, it'll hit the building. Then a horizontal toward the building until you hit the building and stop. And this one has to be long enough so it looks like it wraps around the building.
Why am I having such issues with the sidewalk here that I'm not having here? Franny, what do you think? That's true, but I think the main reason, see how far down this one is from the horizon line? See how close, and this one actually cuts across? Remember how there's no sidewalk here because it's eye level? As it goes up toward the horizon line, it gets thinner and thinner until it's going to disappear. And so when it thins out, it gets really elongated before it finally disappears. Does that make sense? Okay, the cracks in your sidewalk. On the front part of the building, they come by the vanishing point. And most of you in the last couple of years put vertical lines here instead of vanishing point lines. And that's impossible because vertical lines show how tall things are. And this isn't about height. So these are all vanishing point lines. And even up here, they're vanishing point lines. Now, along the sides that go back into space, the sidewalk cracks are going to be horizontal. And it's really hard to keep your ruler straight. So you need to think horizontal every time. And your sidewalk blocks get smaller and closer together as they go toward the point. And you can help that illusion by having your sidewalk lines gradually get closer together as you go back toward the point. Do you see how far apart they are here and then how close together they are here? It helps with the illusion of depth to do that. And these would be horizontal also. If your buildings or your sidewalks look like they're crooked, that means your lines aren't straight. I feel like I'm going too fast. Am I? Buildings behind buildings. If I want a building behind this one, I have to draw my flat shape first and make it look like it drops down behind. This corner would be an invisible corner to the point and the bottom corners I can't see, but I know they have to touch the horizon line and so they're attached to the point already. There's only one corner that will go. And then for your parallel to your vertical here, you're going to come down either until you hit the building and stop or until you hit the horizon line and stop, whichever comes first. point or they have to be horizontal 
Why aren't there vertical lines in roads? That's right. Roads don't have height. They just have width. So I have distance lines and horizontals, never verticals for roads. I am going to teach you how to turn a corner the correct way because almost everybody messes it up. I want to turn left here, so I am going to make horizontal lines, but I'm going to make the top one a lot longer than the second one. Horizontal here and horizontal here, but this one's longer. Does that help? I'm going to erase this because it looks more like a road if it's not marked off like that. Now here's where everybody messed up last year and the year before. They put straight lines down. Can you do that? No. You can't use verticals. I already have my horizontals, so what do these have to be? They have to be distance lines. I'm going to line up the end with the vanishing point, and I'm going to go off the page. I'm going to line up the end with the vanishing point and go off the page. And I'm going to put VP here to remind you that those are vanishing point lines. So I'm driving down the road and I turn left and I turn left again. And there are no roads in the sky. Some people tried to do roads up that way before. Only if it's a highway to heaven. That's it. Okay? If you're going to put painted lines on your road, if you've ever walked along the road, the painted lines are like that wide. So I like to look and see where I think halfway is, and I put two little dots where I think halfway might be, and I line those dots up with my vanishing point, and that's how I do my painted lines. Now if you want broken lines so that you can pass people, then you'd have to use horizontals. And then you would erase in between. So be horizontals here, and then erase a section in between to make broken lines. Broken lines mean that you can pass somebody. Did you know that? And I taught you, you can add freehand your background if you wanted mountains or whatever. And now we're going to do a car because you're big eighth graders. I didn't make you before. Don't panic. I need a flat rectangle that fits on one side of the road. Like that. I still want you to see the point though. 
Then I'm going to take every corner that I can to the vanishing point about the length of how, how long I want my car to be. Just like what we've been doing. Flat shape, corners to the point. And then when I decide how long, a vertical here and a horizontal there. Okay, so far it's a big box. Here's the flat end, the corners to the point. And it always helps me if I put the headlights and like the grill thing, then I can start picturing what I need to see. So I'm missing the top part, right? The windshield and all that stuff. The windshield is another flat rectangle. So I go across the width of the car, and it's a flat rectangle, so I have to come straight up from the corners and make another flat rectangle. And I'm going to erase the lines that I wouldn't see. Now it's a convertible. Can you see it? But if I take the corners to the vanishing point about as long as I want the roof to be on my car and then turn it into a box again with a vertical here and a horizontal there, you have a car. Isn't that cool? Then you can put windshield wipers, you can draw the seats that you would see in there. If you did wheels, tires, I suggest you do them square first. So I do a flat shape and this corner goes to the vanishing point and that corner goes to the vanishing point. So your wheels are here, and you would round them according to the lines that you have if you wanted to round them off. See the difference? So that's our review of a one-point perspective city. And this was what most of us did, except for the car, when you were in the sixth grade. Now, if you'll turn to page four in your packet, Page four in your packet. It looks like this. When we're drawing a one point perspective, we're standing right in front in the middle with the flat shapes facing us. When we draw in two-point perspective, we actually walk over to the corner so that we can see a wall going this way and a wall going that way. So when you're drawing in two-point perspective, you're standing at the corner of a building. Okay? I'm going to show you what I mean. Here's my horizon line. There's point A and point B. There are ten vertical lines I am going to take the top and bottom toward point A. I'm only going to go about halfway so I don't have to erase my guidelines. And then I'm going to take the top and bottom toward point B.
and then my verticals for the parallel to the corner that would connect the distance lines. Now, you can't erase, but if you could, you would erase the horizon line here because you wouldn't be able to see it. Let's do, actually, let's do one down here. This middle one, can you see the one I'm talking about? Top and bottom to A. What's going to be different about this one from this one? You'll be able to see the top. Very good. Everything below the horizon line we're looking down on. So I have vanishing point A and vanishing point B. The sides are vertical. Make sure your ruler's straight. And it's obvious that there's something missing, right? And most of you, your first inclination is to connect those, and that's wrong, because you have to use both points. If B is this corner, then the opposite corner also has to be B. And if A is this corner, the opposite corner has to be A. And that makes the top of the box. So you've got A and B, and then you, if you look, it's sort of cool because it's A, A, and A, and they're all going that way, and B, B, and B, and they're all going that way. I will give three Jolly Ranchers to the person who can tell me how to do the ones that are not in between the points. There's four of them. Can you see them? These two and these two are not, here's point B and here's point A. And all of the lines are in between point A and B except for these four. Does anybody remember what to do with those? Kyle? Yeah, you do the inside side. The thing just gives it, take the two corners, gives it point. No. That was a good try, though. Actually, it's half right. Yes, ma'am. Don't you draw the other ones going like just off the feet, not in like the mm, Not exactly, Franny. Thank you. If it's outside the points, you have to turn it into a flat shape and take it to the closest vanishing point. So you're actually turning it into one point perspective again. Flat shape, which point's the closest to that flat shape? Point A, right? So every corner that can would go to point A. For a point to be able to use A and B, it has to be in between A and B. If it's outside of A and B, then you have to turn it into a flat shape. And take the corners to the closest vanishing point. Okay, listen, look in your tray, and if you have any of my rulers, Please put them back in the box. I'm missing a ton of rulers. Okay? Look through your papers and make sure there's no rulers underneath. And we're done for the day. So as you get ready, you can put your trays away.